Okay, we're going to close out the day with uh, panel discussion, and I don't want to take time away from the panel, so we're going to get right to it. The panel was uh, organized and coordinated by Mira Marcus Kalish, so I'm going to introduce Mira, and then she's going to introduce all the uh, the panelists and give some background. Uh, Mira is, is a researcher here at Tel Aviv University at the Center for uh, Technology Forecasting, and she also works with the Vice President for Research and Development in coordinating uh, international research programs through the university. Mira. Okay, um, thank you, David. And um, before I'm starting, special thanks go to uh, David for organizing all this meeting in this very special way of collaborative, professional, and very relaxed, peaceful, which is not like me. So thank you very much. Um, and also, I'll open that. Also, I want to thank everybody here, which is still here, um, and uh, the Israeli and the Americans. And um, we'll try, you know, and, and um, show all the lecturers, all the speakers for wonderful lectures. And uh, what we'll try to do in this, uh, in this panel is following all um, the wonderful tools uh, that we heard about, going and, and try to utilize these tools uh, in view of all the um, advanced technology that we are facing, whether it's a real thing and whether it's a buzzword. Um, so uh, we'll try to see how could we, um, as providers and as enablers with clinical trials, um, be part of all this new era. Um, so, um, you know, starting with that, um, we will we, we'll try to look on, not on the equation part, but rather on the practically, economically, methodological part to see whether, uh, how could we fit in. And um, the first note that we are, um, you know, I, I was advised to give, to give you a short summary, just that we'll talk the same words regarding those buzzwords and new technologies. So uh, the first one, we are now celebrating the 10th anniversary of the human genome sequencing. So speaking about that, a lot was achieved. Uh, you know, technology, bioinformatics, high throughput, and so on. Even um, the faster and cheaper genome sequence was announced as the big technology adv uh, advancement in 2008 in science. So it was a big thing, a lot was achieved, but I think we, we faced and we realized how complex it is. Ten years ago, I think we anticipated, we, we were expecting more than we, we really achieved. So um, now facing this, you know, complexity level, the question is how do we deal with that? And um, I want to give you another buzzword which was exactly 10 years ago also it was the NSF who, who announced the buzzword converging technology um, it took them it really started around 2003 where money was dropping uh, and and a lot of efforts were done in in these 10 years and a lot of outcomes as well a lot of technology uh, I can if given uh, even give some numbers but I think that each and every one of you which is looking here on the human being and surrounding a, a, as one functioning system, that what was their goal. You know, each one, especially statisticians, when they see that, they, they are really frightened. I mean, could we really deal with all the culture and environment and community and, and all these things at the same time? Um, converging, so this is a big goal, but it's slowly, I mean, following the last, the last lecture, I think we are following, slowly following this direction. But, but more than that, um, you know what converging technology did is really bridge between the various area, moving tools between one area and the other, um, trying to, to, to enable uh, or reduce barriers between the various areas, the various concepts, the various languages. And it's really just by numbers, um, we, uh, I just put 
you know very few uh, of these numbers, the investment in converging technology only in the United States by these um, you know, uh, uh, federal agencies was 1.7 uh, uh, million, uh, it, it should be billion. So, so it's, it's 1.7 billion dollars and the world is 7.7. .7. What was the outcome in these years? In the United States, according to the, the NSF measurement, it was uh, Michael Rocco, it was about 22 billion dollars outcome via patents and, and products which are out there and all the rest. In these 10 years, a lot of institutes, interdisciplinary institutes were initiated, a lot of new programs, uh, new areas at the universities, patent and, and, and somebody who is interested can go through the internet and see all, all, all those measurements and all those numbers. So, you know, in between we gained a lot, and as I said, the tailwind, the, the, the last one that we got is in the, in the AAAS meeting in, in Washington, uh, January, this January, um, uh, Professor Philip Sharp, the Nobel laureate, and, and Leshner, which is uh, the chief uh, editor of science, both titled the, the converging technology as the third generation, uh, uh, third evolution. Further than that, they um, said it will change both the academia, the industry, and hopefully the well-being. As you can see, um, the tightening of the converging technology was for improving human performance. Later on, they changed it, changed it to enhance human performance. How, after all, the ethics people were, uh, were screaming, what do you mean? Do we want to see further? Do we want to hear more? So that's, that's one buzzword, big buzzword. The second one, um, you know, was the personalized medicine. But I want to I wanna really combine the two. And just to, to present you one approach. So the, the idea was to converge between the various areas. The, the second big goal, big buzzword, was personalized medicine. So one way to do it, one suggestion that we title it at simultaneous systematic analysis, is to try and to look at a specific disease, but in all various area. Um, and and when, when we are speaking in all, we are speaking, uh, you know, all the, the ones that we are measuring usually, like biomarkers and all that we have today, and also the climate, the community, um, the culture. Do you believe in? Don't you believe in? Uh, uh, are you a single? Do you, do you live with a family? Um, are you a man or a woman single? Which is different because your risk is much uh, bigger. And, and you know, we know more and more, but the idea was to do it simultaneously, to try and bridge between the, the various groups who are working on the same things beyond the system's biology and beyond uh, what we call brain research and maybe mind that we don't know exactly what it is. And that, in order to do that, to bridge between the various areas, you need some methodology. You need some way to talk to the guy to, to, between the various areas. Beyond the science and technology, we needed some scheme of discussion, and we called it chess. Just to make it more statistically, the, the idea was a kind of a matrix that we are measuring, for example, what I wrote down here, but if for a specific disease, in order to, to apply it, for example, to drug uh, treatment and to, to, to raise drug efficacy and potency, the idea was to look at the same disease on, on people which are considered healthy, pre-diagnosed, on people that are diagnosed, diagnosed and on people that are, that are already treated. And to, to actually, somebody said, even physically to ask those groups to work be, uh, together, so if they have some findings, they can transfer it, not to wait for publicity, not to wait for the journal uh, review and so on, and try to bridge between the areas. So that's just a way of combining converging technology, hoping that it will bring, um, a, you know, personalized medicine, uh, towards us. And when we are speaking now on personalized medicine, we have a lot of slogans, and one of them is 4PM, 
preventive, predictive, personalized, and participatory, participatory medicine. And, and we just heard on, heard on Tuesday uh, Marvin's lecture that said that not always the preventive and the predictive is for the good of our patient. Because sometimes we are overtreated, sometimes he never develops the, the, uh, the disease and so on. Just to fill you in with, with what is happening in the world, the EPMA, the European Personalized Medicine Association, had its big meeting two months ago. It was six days piled with people from all over the world, a big hype. And they have already two journals. Um, you know, it's a, it's a really big hype. But in order to do that, we heard it throughout the lectures and also in Marvin's lecture, lecture on, on Tuesday, we need data banks. We need huge data banks. The truth is that we have more than we had ever. But still, is it? How would we handle it? Could it fit in into personalized medicine? How could we combine it? And so on. Do we have the tools? There are a lot of questions. And just again, to, to, um, beyond the NIH and MRC data banks which are known, there is a new one which is part of the European 2020 program, which is called ECRIN, uh, the uh, European Clinical Research Infrastructure Network. That is built um, out of 14 um, countries, European countries, and nine to join. And they are trying to build an infrastructure for clinical trials relating to all Europe as one area. And that raises another question. If we are speaking about personalized medicine, is all Europe one area from environmental point of view, from cultural point of view, community point of view, etc.? I mean, there are a lot of questions. The other question is, um, are the tools that kind of part of them presented today, and uh, you know the other tools that we know, that, do they fit the need of personalized medicine? Uh, could we deal very efficiently with very small samples with many parameters like the SM, SNPs, the genetic and so on, the physiological, the, the, the cultural and so on. How do we do it? Do we need new tools? And there are out there coming some new tools trying to enable combined data analysis, data uh, from multi-level, multi-source data, not uh, data that is not normalized or not manipulated, not that you don't neglect any part of the data. So there, are, there is a new tool that is called um, Hypercube. There is another data mining tool that we are using, that we developed. So do we need new tools? So all those things for us, um, in order to be the, 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 the good keepers of the well-being and to be able to provide and to, to reduce harm and to provide the right tools to the community, that's what I, I, I want to you know, discuss via this panel and, and present you know, the vision or maybe discuss the vision of clinical trials. So that was kind of just, you know, give you the, the very short background. And, um, and, and the first speaker I want to invite that was introduced already and I, I'm sure he has some, some good uh, answers, is uh, Professor Marvin Velen. And, and just to talk about converging technology in all these new eras and buzzwords, um, Marvin Zelen uh, initiated back in 1985 uh, the MBCRR, the Molecular Biology Computer Research and Research, and resource which was in the way between the Dana Farber Cancer Institute and the School of Public Health, just on the way. And, and uh, you know, the, uh, which I had the privilege to do my postdoc there, thanks to Marvin. And then uh, this lab was the initiator of the uh, metrics of biological knowledge in Santa Fe, bringing together all the biology um, and, and the statistical and the database people together for five, weeks, for five weeks, and that was the basis of the Santa Fe Institute, really. So all that is thanks to Marvin, who was the visionary. So Marvin, please. Uh, I, I'd like to say that you've already heard from me, and perhaps the other people should speak first, and I'll speak last. <laughs> okay, whatever, okay. 
So we'll do that. So we'll, we'll, take, we'll take first, uh, you know, the, the physicians. So um, Dr. Ranan Berger, okay. Uh, so he is currently serves as the director of the Institute of Oncology at the Sheba Medical Center. He is a senior oncologist and uh, a radiotherapist specializing in tumors of the genital urinary tract. Now you know that I don't know what I'm saying. And breast cancer. Uh, uh, um, or breast cancer, okay. And uh, Dr. Berger established six years ago the Riva Kosicki? Kos How do you say? I said it right. <laughs> Thank you. Somebody will be angry with me with this family name. Oncology Clinical Research Center, which is performing over 80 all phases oncological clinical trials. Additionally, additionally he is running a basic and translational research lab at the Shiba Cancer Research Center studying molecular mechanisms involved in progression of prostate cancer, breast cancer, and pancreatic cancer. Uh, he received his MD and PhD degree from, the, from this school, Sackler uh, Medical School, Tel Aviv University, which is very special in a way. He completed clinical training in medical oncology and radiotherapy at the Sheba Medical Center, and he was even a postdoctoral a doctorate at the Dana Farber Cancer Institute, which, which relates to Marvin and where I was as well. And during that period, he was able to combine clinical research, treating prostate cancer uh, patient uh, with Dr. Philip Kantoff and uh, with basic research in Dr. William Hans' lab. So I said it all. Thank you.